This is episode 34, and we have a different setup today um, because we've got a lot of guests. So um, I think <laughs> it was episode. I'll let you. I I always just like ramble all on, on in, and then I'm just like, by the way, it's I don't know. Cool. That's just I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to episode 34. Uh, last episode, episode 33, I kind of just said that. I kind of just put it out there on my Instagram story, like, hit me up if you want to come on Lords, like, let's just talk. And I got a lot of feedback and I got a lot of, like, people requesting some of, like, the same things, like Saltburn, Emerald Fennel, um, Poor Things. And, um, well, that's essentially what our, what our episode's going to be focused on. But because of that, I, was, I had two people specifically want to talk about a Saltburn and Emerald Fennel. And I just... <laughs> assumed these two knew each other In a and past life. i think Only i made a life. friendship so lords of film <laughs> lords of film is responsible for two relationships a marriage and i think a friendship cute yes. i'm i am it's taking a win Anywhere I can get it. You feel Period. me? She said W's in the chat, baby. Pretty much. Like, I'll just brag for it. We won. Um, also, before I introduce these goyles, I want to thank Corey on Instagram. He goes by La Y'all Dog. I want to thank Corey and his little dog, Earl, for giving the snake pit, well, Lords of Film slash the Snake Pit. <laughs> we were gifted our first gift by somebody for the podcast. Um, they We're going to do an unboxing on this probably after this episode, um, but I just wanted to shout them out on this episode. Thank you so much. Um, these are going to be displayed on the desk on our little Lords of Film setup. So little by little, as we get gifted things or donated anything, um, We'll be setting it up on the table if we're able to. But just thank you so much. This was just cool that people even thought to gift it to us. I just thanks, thanks, Corey. Shout thanks. out to you. That's really sick. Yes, I bought yeah. that six pack for them by the way. So. <laughs> I bought nothing. <laughs> Speaking of we're <laughs> sponsored by Elena. That's um, a win is a win. <laughs> so yeah, okay. uh, we've got Elena and we've got P. Hi. <laughs> and we're besties now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to introduce yourselves? Yes. Elena's no stranger to the podcast. She's had her own Snake Pit episode in the past. She's just been on the Conversation Pit. Um, is this your first time on Lords, though? It is. I'm okay, surprised y'all aren't tired of me yet. <laughs> no. It, it's, just, it's just good to have guests, man. Like It's just good to have people just it's fresh to the time. conversation. Yes. You know what I mean? I love being here. I'm tired of you. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Oh, but I'm P. 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 If you're nasty. Oh, um, yeah. I <laughs> say to people, to drunk people at least, they they eat that shit up. You said it to me the first time I met yeah, you. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. It was at Ron side. If you're nasty. Ooh, R.I.P. Yeah. Ron side. Nah, for Aww. real. <laughs> for sure. I'll be out there. But yeah, yes. I'm just here to have fun. I just do things willy nilly, and I like to keep it willy nilly. Period. Perfect. This is gonna be a fun episode. We're all off the tall boys. I'm specifically off the Modelo tall boy Give and the Dr. That. Pepper tall boy. Yes. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper tall boy. But the um, hell of my fucking stomach's going to hurt. hurt. Yeah. Some, the basic old twisted tea, tweez, if you will. It's going to be a fun one. I'm off the 16 ounce. Mm -hmm. 16 ounce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to start this off, okay, just because it's it's fresh on my mind. And I know you said you, you haven't specifically watched this, but you have, and, and you watched it today too. I want to talk about poor things. Okay. I I felt so bad that I never made the time to watch it in theaters. Like I was so Same. like, I was like, oh, you cheated yourself. Literally, like you should have made time because it was so fucking good. Yeah. I I felt like I knew I was, I was going to know it was a good movie. You know what I mean? But, um, wow. Mm -hmm. It was, like, moving, but it was so funny, dude. Yeah. It was so it funny, was, and it was, it was so relatable. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say it right now. We can talk about it in a second, but I think Mark Ruffalo should have gotten what Robert Downey Jr. got. Absolutely. Award-wise. Absolutely. 
He killed it in that shit. Out the fucking water. Literally. Isn't the director that made this the same one that did um, Killing of a Sacred Deer? Yes, with Barry Keoghan. Yes. Is it really? Yes. Oh, oh it my God. Looks I yes. haven't seen that movie. I love The Killing, Killing of, of a Sacred, Sacred Deer. Deer. <laughs> That's a fucking good one. It's a good one. I watched that one during COVID. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna, I definitely want to. That one's on my list for sure. Like, I definitely want to watch that one. It's really good. You Roy, did, did you watch lobster. that one or did oh, you just look lobster. into it? I want to see that one too. No, I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, you should. I guess I'll have to show you. I'll have to show that to you. I have to show a lot of movies to Roy. Like, I have you guys seen Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg? No. no. I have a long time ago. Anyways, I love <laughs> Rockstar. With Mark Wahlberg and Jennifer Aniston, and I, I specifically love Jennifer Aniston's style and aesthetic in that movie. But I just assumed Roy. I, I need to stop assuming shit about people. Obviously, <laughs> it's the lesson I'm learning today. Um, I just assumed Roy, just based off of Roy being Roy, that he had seen this fucking movie, and he was like, "I have no idea what you're talking about." <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, I have to show him that too. So, hell yeah. No, Poor Things is so cool, though, because, like, it's basically, has everybody seen Barbie? Yes. yes. Okay. It's Barbie. It's Barbie, but, like. X-rated. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, like XXX rated, <laughs> if you will. Yeah, it's like if Penny Dreadful made Barbie or mm -hmm. something. I don't know how to explain <clears throat> that, but, like, it's just it's just darkened and twisted, but it's also just colorful and it's mm. beautiful. And um, I was... I knew I wanted to watch it because I had kept hearing that it was like a loose iteration or reiteration of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, I eat that shit up. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I started watching it Friday. I watched it in two parts. I started watching it Friday night. Yeah, because it's a long movie. Well, like I, I meant hours. to knock it out Friday night mm -hmm. and I fell asleep. Like I like when I hit the two hour mark is when I fell asleep mm -hmm. and um I started watching it a little bit this morning, but then I had to go to work. So I, I literally had like six minutes left to finish yeah. after work. And I can't wait to watch it again on my on my day off. Yeah, same. So. Cause that's how I watched it. Like I was on vacation um, in Houston for spring break mm -hmm. and uh, I watched it and I was drunk for the first <laughs> half. And then uh, I had to like, I was so tired. So I watched it the next day. Um, well, I want to <clears> watch it drunk. Yeah. So no, yeah, it was <laughs> it was very like because it's just you know? crazy. Yeah, dude. it's crazy. I literally was like, is it supposed to be in black and white? Yeah. And like, I just thought that was so cool because I was like, I thought yeah. it was supposed to be in color. I was like, when is it? Is mm -hmm. this part of it? And then as I was like looking into like reviews about it and just kind of like seeing people's like breakdowns of it, um, somebody mentioned that like the color grading really has a lot to tell with like Bella's aging process. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why it's yeah. like so bright in the beginning, like when she's like. Well, it's like it's black and white because infants can't mm -hmm. see like color. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I took so it that. So that's that, that that is like it's yeah. like it's a metaphor for her like mental age. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Bella Baxter was not Bella Baxter. I think her name was Victoria. Something like that. So, yeah, some shit like that. Anyways, so the movie starts. It's a it's a woman that kills herself. She throws herself off a cliff. We later and it's bright too, right? The color, like yeah, the color's bright. And um, so the the film starts with her final moment. Essentially, jumps off the cliff, ends her life. Um, she was with child William Defoe's character. We just call him God. Um, he found her, and he is like a scientist and like a surgeon, I guess, um, like a master of like anatomy. And he himself. Um, was like badly experimented on. And so he just saw a fresh body, used it. He took Victoria's brain out and took her baby's brain and put it in Victoria's brain. And he renamed her as Bella. So her mental age and her physical body had to match up to each other. So we literally see her go from like a curious baby infant toddler into like a child into like essentially Boy, woman teenager. womanhood yeah. like, like early womanhood maybe i'm yeah, assuming like, i would say like like 24 or like yeah second. like i would say like that's probably as far as she got like for what we see but mm. um the color grading was supposed to be very symbolic of that apparently um but specifically like the first 30 minutes being in black and white mm -hmm. it was like a 
um, how everybody freaked out uh, during um, the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. Like, it was basically like that for me. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, Yeah, this. and it's crazy. Like, it's just like, and it's such a gradual yeah. shift, though, that it just kind of, like, as the color starts, like, like the first seed in color, it's, like, bright and it's saturated, but there's almost, like, a flatness to it. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, as the film progresses, everything gets, like, more textured and more vivid and there's like a lot more like richness and like there's like a higher contrast in the, like the color grading and so it's just it's a really unprofessional um <laughs> it's just like a really cool transition i guess throughout the film mm -hmm. and it's like a two hour and 21 minute yeah. film i believe something like that yeah but the, even the way the like the scene that like what she's doing in the scene and for that to be when the color comes back on, mm -hmm. crazy. Like, I was like, <laughs> you go, girl. You go get you some. All this shit. Fucking, so, there's yeah. so much fucking, dude. There's so, so much. much. It's so sexual. It's like, so. I knew that was like the gist of it, too. Yeah. She was like, when she's talking about um, that dude, when they were like walking and he was like, I, uh, something Bella Baxter, and she, he's like, I usually charge like 30 francs. Yeah. Or whatever, where she's yeah. like fucking for money, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I never saw it, so I'm not gonna. And <laughs> it's like, so I, but a lot of like the negative shit that I heard for, about this film was that it was like so overtly like sexual and there was so much nudity and so much like whatever, whatever, whatever. And like a lot of people were like concerned for like Emma Stone, apparently, like for like all the, in insinuated sex that she was having on film but the, the reality of this film is like yeah it is it is the reality of if this were to happen somebody would be taken advantage of in that way oh yeah you know what i mean because mm -hmm. she is a like yeah. attract she, she's in like an attractive like 20 maybe early 30 something year old person mm -hmm. and she's like got this like simple mind that just cannot comprehend that people are bad and like as the film progresses she has to like essentially get hardened by the world mm. but she has like so much like empathy like still loaded it's a it's a beautiful film yeah. i don't want to spoil it for you but is, we are is this technically, is this <laughs> like technically what every girl goes through <laughs> in, immensely yes. i mean I in mean, like a very yeah. in as well as the color grading in a very like hyper contrasted like in your face way Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah this is like a female liberation film in the perspective of like how men view female liberation yeah. so it's yeah. like it's very interesting to be a woman and like see all this stuff that's like happening and uh through her you know mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> and like to relate, to be able to relate to it in a way is very interesting. And like the fact that it was written by a man too, or directed by a man, it was written. Yeah, It was written yeah. and directed yeah. by a man, and yeah. <clears throat> so it's like, it's very interesting because it's like, it's essentially just talking about like how girlhood and childhood is, is taken away from us, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it's um, like men typically like make us grow up. Mm -hmm. it, it, oh. They made societal... I just got the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like the patriarchy is very immense in a woman's life and it's like undeniable. So when you when you're watching this movie, it's it's like, whoa, like, like you just she's, explained it so well. She's having so many like sexual encounters with like it goes from like one singular person to just like her um just how gullible she is, I guess, just gets, mm -hmm. it just gets taken advantage of in every single situation. Literally. Yeah. Every fucking yep. situation. And even her, the, that guy, um, I forget his character's name, but the, the guy that uh, is accompanied with God, um, he's like his little assistant. Oh yeah, the scientist yeah. that like falls in love with her. <clears throat> yeah, even he like, he's, he knows exactly what's going on and what acceleration she's coming at. Cause she's like, she's growing like, crazy it's it's crazy she like does um an inch of her hair like an inch grow, grows a day yeah, grows yeah. A day or something oh. like that yeah. and you and you see yeah. her hair like get thicker yeah. and crazier mm -hmm. and like and and crazy. same with her words she like adds 15 words dude it's crazy i that like that fucking blew my mind mm -hmm. like 
and it, it's dude this shit is just so smooth like mm-hmm. as the film goes on her vocabulary yeah. gets insane mm-hmm. and i i fucking loved it because it's like but she's still a child like making like child like mm-hmm. decisions but she's got this like loaded vocabulary of like what she's taking in but like how she's like being shaped by a hardened world yeah because she's in the body she's well, in being shaped by men you yeah know? essentially that's that's the whole thing that i got from this movie is like how men work in the patriarchy if you can't see it and how like enabling other women are mm-hmm. when they go with the patriarchy almost the you know? are you talking about the the hostile mother mm-hmm. yeah yeah like that conversation okay i was thinking about that a lot because at first i was just like what a bitch you know what i mean mm-hmm. but then it's like she also is just unfortunately because of just the how shit is and mm-hmm. how shit just you know what i mean went for bella baxter yeah um she pretty much just told her like let the world harden you yep on, like on some real shit like she just kind of told her like sometimes you just have to do because you just need to make it and mm-hmm. that's just yeah. like she just pretty much yep and uh, you know it was what? the saddest thing literally but i loved her character yeah, i really her liked character her character was, her character was great but that's that's something like men don't have to go through mm-hmm. unfortunately like that's that's why this film was so good is like a men spec a man spectating on it is very interesting because he got a lot of it right you know mm-hmm. and i haven't read the book but i didn't know it was based on a book until I, today I when i was know, like i was just like, like flipping last through week shit to about last it. week so like but apparently the ending's different so like apparently the, the everything that she goes through in the book um is all a dream sequence like uh, oh. something like that i don't know exactly what it is but it sounded really cool so i think i'm gonna buy the book and, and read it because i like reading books too so we'll see oh, but cool what did you think bradley uh it's it was a lot better than i originally thought it was i kind of put out to the side had multiple chances to go see it and just kind of just blew it off and see then, that's what i feel like i just yeah. i would i'm sad i didn't i went to go it. watch imaginary <laughs> intentionally when the yeah. shit was in theaters and then emma stone won her second oscar for it i was just like well shit i guess i kind of yeah should have went to go see it but um overall i, I thought it was uh, i thought it was well even for a movie that's two and a half hours I felt like it was very well paced. It didn't feel um, like two and a half hours. No. And that's and that's like a lot of the feedback I heard from people recommending it to me. They were like, it's long, but like you are so into this story. Like it doesn't yeah. feel like time just yeah. flies. Mm-hmm. Time yeah. flies. Uh, I really liked uh, Emma Stone. I thought she did a great job acting. Um, I do think, yes, yeah, she she did deserve her, her, her Oscar win. Mm-hmm. Um Everything down to like how she spoke, how she like moved, like even like her walking and mm-hmm. everything, and like her bodily movements, and <clears throat> it's insane. Yeah, like I don't and know the whole dance scene. Like that shit was lit. Had me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Work, girl!" I see you bouncing, and then Ruffalo came in. I love. I okay. I love hated his character so Same. much. I was kind of like, ugh. Same. The quote he said, what does he say? I advise that you do not f- fall in love for me for all I have to offer is just adventure. And Literally. <laughs> yeah. And and it, then, it, yeah. It's like, yeah that's like it, mostly every guy. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it does sound like every guy. Oh, my God. Like, that was a more pleasant way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> compared to. So relatable. <laughs> it's like, I just want to be friends with benefits. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. And then he's all. Crazy. Something I should yeah. probably start saying. No, I but like Loki, he was disgusting. He was fucking disgusting, Loki, yeah. because he was attracted to her because she was so simple-minded and almost childlike, mm-hmm. and he knew that he could just take her away and like that she was just gonna like as she was advancing, yep. that she would want to do things, and so that's why he took her essentially. And there's a part in the film where he's like, "You don't have that." cute like your voice isn't high as it used to be or something do you remember that i remember that and i said bitch what (laughs) yes no literally i was like i go excuse i excused it i i thought you were "Mm, never mind (laughs) no it's it's yeah i caught on to that and i was just like literally yeah oh my god uh, and i love how the film shows the dark side of, of of that especially I guess dealing with like ownership and 
people you thinking, oh, your territory, like the male character at the end. Truly. You know, um, showed the dark side of that and took a very different turn. And she was used to being free, exploring, got mm-hmm. to find who she was. And then her, won't spoil who it was, but, um, you know, he technically was just like, you are my territory. Yeah. Like you're coming like, back. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, that was... And that that part too, like that little plot twist was crazy to me because I did not expect that happening. Like I thought this was going to be about like this. I thought it was going to eventually going to happen because somebody else think. called her by her name <laughs> earlier yeah, in the film. It was foreshadowing. Yeah. And I, so I, I, is, I just, I didn't know how they were going to like introduce it. But like mm-hmm. as fast as it happened, I was just like, no. I know. Don't, don't no. go. Don't literally. Go. And how she got out of that situation. It made me so sad for Cert. her. It's I literally Cert. was so scared it was going to be some like circle shit and she was going to kill herself. Same. I was so scared. I thought it was too. I literally thought she was going to kill herself. I said, damn. Yep. But, but yeah. Overall, I, I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. A lot more than I thought. Uh, it kind of sucks. I put it off until 15 minutes before I showed up. Here. We <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I need to watch it soon. Yeah, sure. definitely. Yeah. And it's highly recommend. It's on Hulu. Yes. Oh, okay. It's on oh, Hulu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So that also enticed me because I was like, "Fuck yeah!" It's on a streaming service. Hell I have. yeah. Yes. No, yeah. And it was the the girl that I watched it with, my best friend Anita. She, um, I don't know if you've met Anita before. She's mm-hmm. the goth girl that I hang around with a lot of the time. I don't know. Anyways, um, <laughs> she's very. She's like she just graduated with her master's in the forensic psychology oh, yeah. stuff Shout out so you. she's like into all these oh, movies yeah. like she's put me on to so many of these movies and i got to watch it with her and we're the type to pause so <laughs> um what the fuck like and then repause and everything so like just being able to talk through that movie with hers was very interesting so so off of that like being able to like discuss like films that are i guess like this we can talk about Emerald Fennel. Oh, yes. But Elena and I earlier were talking about Promising Young Woman. Have you seen this? Yes. Let's Delish. go. Have you seen this? No, I have not. Ooh. Delicious. Go on. Y'all Great. can talk about it. This is, it's, he's it's like, he's same. like it's you, good. you girls talk. <laughs> you girls talk. <laughs> no, I'm saying don't worry about spoilers of me. <laughs> we'll spoil Honestly, it all I highly recommend. I want to say it might be on HBO Max. I think that's where I watched it the first I time I had remember. COVID. I watched it. I Who's think in it? it? COVID no, Survivor. It's on Prime. Well, Twice. I think it's on Prime. Oh, you know, Laverne um, Fox is in it. Yes. yes. Love Laverne. Carrie Mulligan. Um, oh, okay. From Jennifer Drive. Coolidge plays her oh, mother. Yeah. Bo Burnham. Oh, yeah. Um, The dude from, I can't remember his name, but it's from New Girl. Um, Oh, the, the Schmidt. 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 Um, <laughs> that's his the character. The guy <laughs> that plays... I don't know if y'all ever saw The Help. Uh-huh. But oh, I haven't yeah. seen that one. OG? Yeah, Emma Stone. Yeah. Her, like, love interest, the guy, he's also in that one as well. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a great – that's, like, one of my favorite films of all time just because it's, like, it's very – Dude, that movie – <laughs> I I've Female only seen it once. Don't expect what's gonna come yeah. from it. You I think was it's like a quirky so little, like, fucked up over it. Yeah, I was sick. My little chest was heavy because I had phlegm, and <laughs> oh. but also it was just it was just heavy because it was just like there. That's just that's just how it would probably go. Yeah, actually, um, and it was just very like it was so heavy, but it was so fucking sick. Anyways. Yeah. So I might need help kind of walking through this plot because this was like two years ago that I watched this. I just recently watched it. So. Okay, so I believe Carrie Mulligan's character is in her 30s. Huh? Yeah. Right? She's in her 30s. She lives at home with her parents. Um, she is single, doesn't have any kids. She works at a coffee shop. She's just kind of doing her own thing. Um, she was formerly a nurse. She was a doctor. med student. Doctor. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. She was a med student. She, yeah, she wanted to be a so her and her best friend Nina were in med school together Mm -hmm. and this group of like med students that you'll later see on in the film Bo Burnham is one of them that they Mm -hmm. were in school together with um so Nina um ended up getting like sexually assaulted mid through yes um so Nina had to drop out and so um 
Cassie had to drop out as well and take care of her. Mm -hmm. And then I believe Nina ended up taking her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cassie basically went on this, like, female rage, like, journey of just tormenting and torturing any man that is, you know, in the position to try to take advantage of some woman. So she goes out and she acts like she's drunk. Um, and guys, of course, will just come her way and they'll be like, oh, yeah, like, let me let me take you home, like, make sure you're OK. Mm-hmm. And then she goes home with them and then she's not drunk at all, but they think that she is. Mm-hmm. So they try to, you know, get with her and uh, take advantage of her. And then she kind of just like comes to and she's like, hey, by the way, like what the fuck you know, are you about like, to do? There is a. Yeah. Uh, one so the oh McLovin's in this one too. So the scene where like uh, oh yes yes, yes. <laughs> so, I forgot about that. Yeah. He's all like she's like Neil, Neil, what are you doing? And he's like all like about to like go down. No 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 wait. I think I'm getting this one confused. Um, there's another. There's like so many different yeah. actors in this one, mm-hmm. but it's like essentially the same thing. Like this one guy's like trying to go down on her and like take her underwear off, and she's like, "What are you doing?" And she's like, "Up." And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, yeah, shit, she's, she's not drunk at all. Like, she's like completely sober. Yeah. Literally. And just like freaks the fuck out. So yeah. and sh- some of them that sh- she kills, some of them she just like scares. And then she has like this little book, this pocket book of yep. like her little people that she wants yes, to intimidate. Yes. Yeah. Like some some she'll just so, straight up intimidate and others she'll just like yeah. done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's good. I love it. it it's very and good. And then the end, the end is just like. Wow. You wouldn't expect it. Yeah. So essentially what she does, yes, that, but she also like her, like she gets on this mission, this Mm -hmm. like revenge mission of like, she is targeting the people that assaulted Mm -hmm. her friend. Mm -hmm. And so she's essentially like taking them down, like kind of one by one a little bit. I want to say there's one of them at this point is getting married and is having Mm -hmm. a bachelor party. Yeah. So she has this idea of, like, that's the one that she's going to kill. That's like she, the main one that actually assaulted her friend. Yeah, so yes. she's like, this is the, 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 main, oh, and the head one. Bo Burnham's character, that shit was <sighs> that fucking heartbreaking. so mad. Literally heartbreaking. So I said, mad. man, <laughs> you can't trust him. You cannot trust him. No, no, no. Suck. I was so heartbroken. I said, talk about it. Fuck. Just talk about it. Go Literally, oh, my God. So when I found when I when she heard that video or she heard his voice in yes. that video, I was like, "Bruh, no Dude, way!" That one, I was like, "Are you fucking?" No me? way, and no she, way. She's so bold. I love the boldness. Of Literally, her character too, where she just like the, and her the actress. She's oh my god, Carrie the way Mulligan? she can switch, Mulligan. like her mannerisms. <laughs> Great actress. Great actress. Is she the one that plays... Um, yep. She's in Drive. in Drive. Yeah, that's yep. right. She's also in Saltburn. Yep. Yeah, she, oh, she is. She's also in Saltburn. Which I character is that? Carrie she Morgan. plays the... Is, is she like the Pamela. drunk cousin or something? The like redheaded Pamela. one. Yeah. Duh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. And she God. just has a very brief, like, cameo. Oh, not like a couple of brief cameos. She's got like, she's got like a good, like, 15 minutes, yeah. 20 yeah. minutes in the movie. Okay. Where she's like yeah. consistent it in it. She's just like a filler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But her and Emerald Fennel are actually like really good friends. Oh, so they're best. They're kind of just like, they just go kind of hand in hand. Hell yeah. But. So it's off topic, but have you all ever seen a movie called Teeth? Yes. yes. I haven't. <laughs> yes. You've that. never seen Teeth? No. Oh my God. I'm going to find it, it kinda, to see where it's streaming and I'm going to tell you where bet. to watch it. So technically, it's wow. about a woman. Probably on TV. Also, Teeth was also filmed in Austin. Uh, oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's about a woman who, or it's a teen girl, who all the guys that betrayed her, you know, um, she pretty much grows teeth in down down in that area. Oh, gotcha. And so the way her payback is, she fucks them. And it's on Tubi. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> so. Nah, that's that's a serve in itself, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So she's like cursed with this like vagina that has teeth and but also it's like if she gets taken advantage of she's like killing these men but yeah chopping their shit off. you know what i wish my really vagina cool. had like retractable teeth that'd be, <laughs> that'd be actually cool like honestly <laughs> just in case you know being a woman is hard <laughs> this is my curse literally <laughs> this is my curse and a blessing at the same time <laughs> no, i'm so sorry oh, to do this man. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, we pause. Are we, we still. Re- we still. I think we've been good? recording this whole time. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> so you're talking about so the part where I'm like literally about to shit or piss myself. Isn't there? <laughs> it's great. And there you go. Hell yep. yeah! And we're back. We're gonna take a little potty break. And we are. Um. Back. We were talking about what were we talking about? Teeth. 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 Yes. You can stay there if you want. Teeth is sick as fuck. I've been watching it since I was like 17 years old. Damn. And yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those movies. Like I'll just, I can just watch it. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. It's one of your comforts. Yes. If you will. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. Like it's just, it's so like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So, um, and it's, I want to say it's like, it's like literally made like in the 2000s. So it's just. I think it just is like just of the era a comfort film for me because I like yeah. I just like movies from the two thousands. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's a good one, man. Hell yeah. Um, what else has Emerald Fennel done? Promising Young Woman, Saltburn, and one other movie, The Danish Girl. The Danish Girl. I haven't seen it. I started watching it today after I finished Poor Things. And I have 48 hours to finish it on Amazon Prime because I rented it. Where? Nice. Um, but I just, it's a little too heavy mm-hmm. for me. And I just, I don't think I was like just mentally there today to like heavy take in, it. in what way? Um, so from what I'm, not from what I'm understanding, this is what the film is about. It starts off with this married couple. I'm literally blanking on names. Um, but they're painters, they're married, they're in love very healthy sexual relationship whatever um he starts like he he essentially comes to terms with himself that he feels like a woman oh work yeah and he decides to transition and his his wife or her wife just embraces them you know what Mm -hmm. i mean and but also struggles with it at the same time. Gotcha. Like they want to embrace them and like take care of them and guide them through it. But it's also just they La. are losing their husband. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. she's having to come to terms that her husband is never going to come back because he's going to get the surgery. Mm. So it's like he's going for like a permanent change and she's gotcha. having to come to terms with it. And I, I got pretty far into it. I just was like. There's a scene where he's boarding a train, and I was just like, I can't fucking do yeah. this. Like if I, I it's really emotional yeah, like shit. if I'm gonna, yeah, if I was gonna be doing this tonight, I just would have been like quiet or something. Yeah. I don't know. I just would have been like, <laughs> it was a good movie. It is. It's very yeah. heavy. It but it's beautiful. Re- it's a beautiful film. It's so pretty. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was one that I didn't get a chance to watch either. But I know, like, like I will read like the synopsis of a lot of films before I watch them because I'm so like, surprised. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like I want to know what it's about before I watch Same. it. Um, but yeah, it is. It's it's so sad. It kind of reminds me too of like, did y'all ever watch Orange Is the New Black? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So back to Laverne Cox. Mm-hmm. Um, we're in his character, her character in the movie is basically was a man and then transition and then like her hus or her wife you know like lost yeah her. Mm-hmm. so it's kind of the same gotcha and i can understand like that's gotta be just yeah like, especially I mean, like if if you know somebody for that long and are with them and you feel like you know them like 100 percent down to a t yeah. and then all of a sudden boom mm-hmm. i mean that shit would be crazy to me too and i'm a pretty open person so that's like the ultimate definition of like unconditional love like if you love somebody like let it go or let them go yeah you know like mm-hmm. that's uh. It's deep. It's so beautiful. But yeah, <laughs> it's so I just couldn't beautiful. do it. Like some movies, I need to just like I need to be able to like rot a little afterwards. Yeah, so I can yeah. just kind of be like couch rot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes I just need to be like that. To brief it. Yeah. My Instagram name is Hella Soft for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, that was a good one. No, you guys are foaming at the mouth to talk about saltburn oh, oh yeah God. <laughs> literally i have like four pages of notes over this shit like <laughs> Yo, i i watched it i did your hair in december mm-hmm. december 23rd to, to be in this. fact and oh. to be to be exact because you were like have you seen saltburn blah, blah, blah. and we were like it's so good i want to you watch it and i was like okay Okay, I'll check it out. Because I, I knew I needed to watch it eventually because obviously we do this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. knew it was one of the movies I needed to watch, but also I had Barry Keegan, Kogan? Keoghan? 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 
I don't know. He, oh, it's a little freak ass he man. Is. He's such a little freaky boy. I that love man it. has oh been on his God. freak shit and he is getting paid for it, so he I don't think his freak shit's gonna stop. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know what? I really hope it doesn't. I know. I, <laughs> so <laughs> when I saw him in Killing of a Sacred Deer, I'm like, this fucking like it just He very always plays weird, weird little guys. Yeah. Creepy little freaky man, like <laughs> in does. the banshees of inertia. Yeah. I want to see that one too. I that was seen the that most yet. his little role is so tragic, <laughs> man. Yes, he's so and then like um he was also in like one of the Marvel films or something. Oh really? Before that, I think. So, and then when I first see head. him, I'm just like, this strange little man. And then I'm like watching this and I'm just like, yeah, I'm feral. No, literally <laughs> I'm watching, I watched this in theaters and I literally, oh my God, I went to go see it with Anita and literally we look at each other at every single point we, we needed to look at each other. It was immediate. It was like, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what is going on? So, oh my god! <laughs> before I saw it, like everyone on TikTok, you know, was talking about like the bathtub scene. So yeah. I'm thinking like, before I even saw it, I'm like, okay, so these guys are in college, like you know, they're maybe like you know, sexually experimenting, you know, whatever. They're fucking. And so I was like, think. oh, they fuck in the bathtub, and then I see the bathtub scene, and I'm just like, oh, they You're were like, no. No. Yeah. Nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. It was yeah. He the, was slurping that water. He was, yeah. he was slurping it. He was like. Yeah. That was it the was the best shit I've ever seen. I know. And he was like crazy. Like, the drain, too. I know. Yeah. He was giving he the drain like a rim job. Yeah. Was, the drain. Yeah. And I, I was eating that shit up. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there and I was just like, oh my God. I have never wanted to be a drain. Literally, <laughs> oh my god, no! Same. I literally did not have that thought. My thought was like, I know that shit tastes like pennies oh, no. or something. It's like, so, it's like it's so nasty and, so and dirt. <laughs> oh, but I was just like, dirt. the dirt fucking scene was not as bad. It was arguably yeah. a lot hotter than the drain licking well, scene. And like, the but ultimate one, it was though, still weird. Yeah, I don't know. when they were yeah, imagine the filming then. that scene. Oh, apparently yeah. that was that not improvised. Oh no, it was that was improvised, oh, and it was a closed set. It was yeah. a closed yeah. set too. So, but I'm pretty sure the the people that were um, like editing all that shit, they were like, <laughs> <laughs> Barry, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, literally, like imagine like just watching that get filmed. Like, what do you? Are you just like literally? Do we stop him? Do well, we <laughs> And <laughs> like give him like give him a minute I guess yeah and Let's it's see. crazy too like that 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 he improvised that because there's this dichotomy of love and hate constantly going in between him and Felix and uh, their whole family mm -hmm. and so it's like the fact that he did this just makes perfect sense because it's like also the perfect dichotomy of love and hate it's yeah. like he's like defiling his grave but at the same time like he's been he's like obsessed he's obsessed him. with him and he loves him in a way so it's like yeah it's almost like he was he loved him so much that he was like obsessed with him yeah to the point to where like he only wanted him to have him and like he didn't want the other guy yeah. to like have anything at all you know what i yeah. mean and it was just very it was insane but it, okay so we've got felix and what's the other character's name uh, the Oliver? main, yeah, Oliver is the main character. Felix and Oliver. So, <laughs> Oliver is a college student. He is just kind of just a guy at this university. Felix is this tall, handsome, good Jacob looking. Jacob Alordi. Yeah, it's, it's Jacob Alordi. It's Jacob Alordi <laughs> from Euphoria and Priscilla. Oh, beautiful great. movie as well. God damn. Um, <laughs> God, that movie wrecked me. Um, every, I guess, just cinema wrecks a girl, but. So anyways, these, these two are in college, complete opposites. They become friends. Um, Felix kind of takes Oliver under his wing, uh, starts partying with him. Um, Oliver pretty much lets Felix know that he comes from like a rougher home life and that he's got alcoholics and addicts for parents and that he struggles a lot. And so Felix invites him to spend, was it just summer break? Uh -huh. Yeah, summer. Yeah. Summer at their house in Saltburn. Or their in Salt estate Burn. is called Saltburn. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what he says, like, come to Saltburn with me or whatever. And 
he does and Saltburn ends up being like an entire estate like um, a, a castle yeah you couldn't say mansion it's it's, it's a, a castle, castle. Yeah. yeah they have a whole maze they've got grounds everything. yeah grounds, it's not even land it's grounds. grounds on grounds on grounds honey it's insane Literally. and um <laughs> god watching that movie i love how pia is just co-signing like like i'm just like describing the movie and Listen, she's like i'm the grounds dramatic, <laughs> <I'm> the, like, <laughs> I'm the dramatic <laughs> flair okay we needed we just needed to give her the soundboard so she can just like be like beep, 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 beep. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> that's what we need to do we need to start introducing ourselves by the soundboard um oh, but amazing. yeah i know so felix comes from like rit- he's it's just riches essentially like yes. he's fucking loaded his family's loaded but his family it they they definitely look down on Oliver. They see him as an outsider. They see him as less than, and they pity him. But they take them. Mm-hmm. But they take him in, and they love him in their very shitty ways. And Oliver just takes them from the inside out. He eats them up. Yeah, pretty he much. Like he, literally, literally. Can we go to the garden scene. The that vampire was, scene. That was, <laughs> that was okay. weird too. I, I remember like seeing that, and I was like, "He's not gonna. They're not gonna do." Okay, like, I, I we have mixed reviews I'll about the. Right now. <laughs> 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 I will no, combust. no, same because we have mixed reviews about the the bathtub scene. Like people either like. Oh my god, that's hot! Or oh my god, that's fucking disgusting. It's both. I couldn't. I was like, it's both. Yeah. So, and I, I, but I'm like, am the I? vampire scene. I. <laughs> oh my god! Me out the no mouth. way! No like, way! Literally, literally. <laughs> break of an aneurysm. Literally, I, I. I just wanted to be. I wanted to be Oliver. Like I don't. I don't <laughs> like that shit. Like, but I. The dominance that he asserted with Venetia was you like. To be Oliver? I want to be Oliver. I want to be Venetia. Okay, <laughs> listen. I, I'm a dominant person through and through. And so that's why I wanted to be him so bad. I said, oh my God, this, I'm going to have to use this at some point. Like, you will eat and you will not oh, and he was throw like, your bulimic oh. ass up. You know, and like, <laughs> when he said, do you understand me? Literally. And I was like, <laughs> I was I was nodding too. I was like, "Oh my god!" And okay, can we talk about that though? That <laughs> nod, the nod was so cool because okay, there's this in every in everything when he is around Felix and all that stuff. He's lurking in these shadows, like he's a shadow character. Oh yeah. And so like you can see that like in the scene where uh, uh, F- Felix is laying on his ground smoking that cigarette, mm-hmm. he's in the shadow in the windowsill, mm-hmm. and like he's behind all these windows, right? Yeah. Okay. He's watching somebody. So like, when that freak. nod came, I was like, whoa, because he was in the shadows and he did that yes thing while she did it at the same time. Mm. And it was like a like a succumbing moment. And it was, and I think that's why it was so hot to me, is like, they were like both on page and it was just cinematically perfect. Well, and I feel like that was almost like the turning point in the film where mm-hmm. it was like, this guy is actually insane. Yeah. And like, he's about to like, I don't know, like that, like I feel like that was the turning point and even his like demeanor and his approach with the family and everything. Mm-hmm. Because after that, what he, who did he go after? It was... Oh, what was Farley. His, Farley. Farley. Oh, my God. Um, if That was unnecessary. I felt really uncomfortable yeah. with that, too, though. <laughs> if my friend Dev watches this, you look just like him. And I love you. Farley? Anyway, Farley. Oh, oh my God. Y'all got to meet Dev. It's Dev, beautiful. y'all got to meet these people, okay? <laughs> but um, I really liked Farley's character because he reminds me, like, a lot of me. And uh, I could relate to him so well because he was like, he saw through the bullshit. Yeah, he saw through the bullshit. And but no one's as smart as Venetia is in this movie because Venetia figured out everything. And in the in when she was in the tub, mm-hmm. and so uh, that was crazy. Also, I don't think she took her own life. I think. Like he, yeah, you th- yeah. I because mean, I can see that too. I don't know if y'all saw, but there was blood all over the floor. Like there was tons of blood around the bathtub and in the bathtub and all that shit. But why was there blood when you see that person walking in to uh, see Ven- Venetia dead? Why was there blood blur, all? Yeah, why was the, why was the blood all the way to the door? 
I actually didn't pay attention to that. I paid attention to that because I was like, listen, honey, no way. No way. Uh uh-uh. uh. Because you see that, that part where he sets, it, sets the razors down. Mm-hmm. And that alludes to her. You know, because did he did he leave before he left the razor stones or were they? Because I remember they were like, I don't think so. They I were think like it was just making s- out sitting. and still like. Well, we didn't see the um, the razors being put down until um, the sequence at the end. Yeah. So. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. But so you only see his like, hands. Yeah, because it that that does make me question. Like, did were they just like? into it and then he just like did it himself or like just left her to the point where she felt like that's all that she had either like, or yeah i don't all she could do from that point i, I don't, don't know. know but that's but that's, that's that, my theory that makes yeah i mean that that makes a lot of sense and that's the one thing because i can grasp all these like facts of foreshadowing and like symbolism and i was so into this movie and i've seen it around five times mm-hmm. now and i took like notes during the movie and everything multiple times so it's like that's the one thing that kind of confused me, just because you you don't really know if that's yeah. what happened. Because he ended up killing yeah, uh, Rosamund Pike's character, uh, Elspeth. Yes, Elspeth. He ended up killing like he seduced her basically towards the end, like killed off her entire family, and then like goes ghost, and then like they meet up in a cafe like several years later or however long, mm-hmm. and then they get together, and then she ends up like falling ill mm-hmm. and then he basically just kills her off and then just takes over he, the he entire had been poisoning state. her like, yeah <laughs> yeah he's straight oh my god out that was the most chilling tube. thing i have ever seen in my life just because like i was not expecting that i thought he was gonna do the worst and like have sex with her Oh. That's that's where my mind was going. I mean, he did fuck and it was grave, so it's, it's yeah, and so like he's very the only way he can express his feelings is physically. So like, and you mm. see that through the entire movie, like he's not mm-hmm. himself, like fully. He's lying to all these people. So like, obviously, he's like doing all these things because that's how he feels in the moment, mm-hmm. and he has sex with these people and these things. And that's a good point. Um, but uh, so I thought he was gonna have sex with her and I was gearing up for that and I was like mentally preparing myself for that. And then, (laughs) (laughs) like, no, it was that, when I saw that in theaters for the first time, I was like, like almost had an anxiety attack. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, like that has to hurt, like, oh my God. Literally, it was so bad. Yeah, it's basically Gone Girl, but for men. That's <laughs> I, that's I that's so I wasn't a big fan of the movie, but I was like it had a very Gone Girl ass plot, mm-hmm. which I I liked the story. The Rosamund Pike's in there too. Rosemary, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, I, I that's, love maybe that's why I made the connection, but yeah. <laughs> no, Saltburn was so. Saul why Burn was is very this? Good. Why is this such a popular movie? Like, what did it? I, like, why? Why does everybody <sighs> love this movie? Like, I'll tell you why I loved it. You can go first. <laughs> So I'm, I'm gonna have a long ass explanation. I, I, I genuinely want to know because it just didn't happen for me. But also, I've only given it one watch, mm. and yeah. as of recently, I learned sometimes it takes a girl five to six years and four watches to maybe like something. Yep, finally. Suspiria. Yeah, um, but the Bleep new it. one <laughs> I can't get behind the new one. It just it's just so weird that they just change so much. But anyways, that's beside the point. I think the reason why, first of all, because it is just so like sexual, and it's like it, it feeds like the is it, is like, it Barry? Is that what I it is? Know. Is it to Jacob Elordi? Is it just the combination? Both. I don't of know. That? Who knows? Who knows? Not to me. Uh, <laughs> but I have no. <laughs> I think just because of how, like, Emerald Fennel, like, she does, like, a slow burn. Like, at the very beginning, at, like, Promising Young Woman, same concept. It's, like, you don't think it's going to be what it is until, like, it gets to that point. And then you're, like, oh, fuck. This is completely, like, it just throws you off completely um, because of how it was with, like, Promising Young Woman up until the very, like, end. And then you're, like, oh, fuck. Like, this is wild. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But also just, like, the... I want to say that this one was more targeted towards, like, the female fantasy of, like, mm-hmm. sexual, you know, like, <laughs> mm-hmm. 
absolutely in like a a little bit of a submissive way too and i don't know maybe that's just like my my depiction of it but either way i think it's just because it's so like sexual it's so like it catches you off guard it's just and then barry jacob alordi like that those are like the hot you know like Mm -hmm. actors like right now in this moment yeah so the up and coming like they're new they're fresh they're hot they're like you know Mm -hmm. so it's just that's my opinion but the okay so the my thing with this movie being great is um basically right now we're dealing with a lot of um social issues right Mm -hmm. so like that's what it appeals to, essentially. Like, it's mm-hmm. technically an eat the rich movie. Because it, it does kind of speak that, in class. Yeah. Yes. On, See? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes me so, sound like I'm just... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> like, this bitch is Elena 40. Was like, yeah, Elena was like... <laughs> no, but it's down true. Fuck. It's so <laughs> true. <laughs> it is so true, though. Like, it, like that's what catches our eyes. <laughs> so funny. And especially, like, us being in a very highly um, mental state all the time. Like, we're yeah. always talking about autism and ADHD. Every, like, mental illness you can think of, we're finding it out, uh, like, right now, all about, like, ourselves and everything. So when this, like, master manipulator comes yeah. to us and we get to see it in its full-blown form instead of seeing it in little ways that, like our past relationships have been, or you've come across Mm. a person who's a master manipulator, you don't see that right away. You know, you have to like dive deeper and see what that person is doing to you. So this gives like a perfect opportunity to us, the viewer, to see a master manipulator and how it all comes together and how punctual they are and how Mm. persuasive they can be. Also, fuck the rich. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> they were bad guys too. And the the whole thing with this movie is showing how opulent um things can be, but underneath it all it some things can be so trashy. So like for example, like a good symbolism in that movie would be um Felix and um Oliver in the in the first scene in the um house you see that fly catcher in mm-hmm. the chandelier. Mm. And so, and right when it pans onto that, Oliver goes, oh, wow. And so it's like, this this place is very opulent, like very gorgeous, whatever, whatnot. But then why is there a fly catcher? Like it's trash. Yeah. Oh. You know, so it's, like it's almost like this is just still. Yeah. Just a mess. That's and still really with good, bugs. Like, still yeah. Shiny. And it's yeah. like, it's the exact same as um, the Cattens, the family. Mm. It's, they're very opulent and they're very classy. But the moment you get to know them, they're fucking horrible they're people. They're shitty and they've got they problems and they've yeah. got their own and like addictions. And yeah. I love that. Here's another thing. <laughs> They do that thing, you know that saying where um, you always see someone else's uh, flaws, or you you always see your own flaws in someone else first than you see yours. Mm -hmm. Um, They're constantly doing that with in themselves, like how um, uh, Elizabeth prize to um, Oliver and everything, um, and Felix has to be like, I'm sorry, my mom was so rude. He did the same fucking thing in that bar, and that's that's the only reason why he started lying. That's what he wanted, because he was only reacting to the bad shit. So he just kept snowballing, and that's what, like, turned this whole thing. Anyways, yeah. yeah. It's just, like, the sin- the symbolism in this movie, like, Emerald is a creative So, like, th- this is definitely a yes. film that needs more than one oh, viewing. Oh, absolutely. Okay. 100% because you just start catching things like you would never notice until you looked in the corner over there. If you look in the corner down there kind of vibe. So it's like, I've watched this movie like five times. I love this movie. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's great because it just keeps adding and adding every time I, I watch it. So, you know what? So I'll say this since this is off topic, but it's related in the way of like taking like just multiple viewings of something. Um, Obviously, I love Hereditary, so it's like the more I watch it, the more I'm like, damn, this shit was just clear as day. Like, it's just like a roadmap of, like, how the story is going to go. And I feel like Midsummer is like that as well, but it's just... I love Midsummer. But it it was like, it was kind of like that, like, on first viewing, I was able to piece it together pretty Mm -hmm. well. But, um... Well, Florence Pugh. (laughs) 
Yes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> babe. The like, babe. You but, can catch anything with her, you know? <laughs> it's like, wow. She's great. <laughs> um but I I fucking hate the Suspiria remake from twenty eighteen. Um oh, but I've never so, seen it. You know it's what? It's so Okay, so I still obviously am gonna be partial to the original with by Dario Argento. I'm gonna always love the original trilogy the original score just the color grading of it and everything um i saw it twice in theaters in 2018 when it came out because i watched it the first time fucking hated it gave it another watch didn't like it the second time as well this last year i ended up watching it on prime and i was like i just i can't i i on a home screen i I fucking can't get into it it was showing at alamo so me and bradley went to go watch it on fourth fucking watch, I was <laughs> like, watch. this shit's all right. <laughs> this shit's I all actually right. do like this color grading. Yeah. Like, damn, okay, this is actually a beautiful ass academy. Mm-hmm. Damn, this shit, like, it was, I feel like it was almost, I, I appreciated it. I appreciated the nods to the original that I caught the fourth time around. But that is not a good thing. But also, as a diehard <laughs> fan of the OG Suspiria, I'm glad I gave it a fourth watch because I started seeing a lot of the nods it gave to the original and also some of the, like, I think it's funny, like, because it, yeah, oh, okay. The original Suspiria is an Italian horror film, but it's, it is well known that it is has really really bad english dubbing (laughs) so the conversations sometimes are like delayed and even like the reactions are somewhat delayed and it's kind of funny when you watch it um i caught on to that the fourth time around watching suspiria like some of like some of these conversations not all of them but like particularly with like the dance directors like the 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 witches and stuff Mm -hmm. like that it was the same kind of pacing and the same kind of like i don't know it, it it was like I I caught it. Yeah. I caught it this time. Um, but also I just I really liked the story this time around. I just I don't know why I just thought it was like just two up its own ass the first yeah. couple times and on the fourth watch I was like I actually I like this and I will consider it a retelling mm-hmm. yeah. of Suspiria, not a remake. Yeah. And I st- I still <laughs> think the score the score is ass though. I don't care that Tom York did it. <laughs> Period. Okay. Radiohead. Ta- ra- yeah. Radiohead's cool. Okay. Don't touch the Suspiria score. <laughs> <laughs> Put some flavor on it, but you can't because that was six, six years ago. Yeah, you can't some top. spice. You can't top. Go- Honestly, I Goblin, think- that's for sure. Goblin, the score is fucking great. Did you end up watching the original? I yeah, did. you did. But it's still fresh in my mind. Like, I still, because you, you had asked me, so what did you think at mm-hmm. the end? Mm-hmm. And I was just like, it's, it was a movie. Like, yeah, you were <laughs> like, mm. I mean, it's. That's how I felt about Saltburn. That's why I was just like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? I mean? Like it just, I, I, I got the story, but I was just like, I just don't get it. I mean, you I know, d- like why it was hitting people. Yeah, I mean, I do appreciate. I mean, there's a lot of symbolism in it, especially dealing with Berlin in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. You know, it deals with the Berlin Wall and back and forth with communism and capitalism, and I think it goes back and forth with that, but. Not so much in your face, but mm-hmm. it's very gray too. Especially when he, uh, when the doctor like crosses uh, to go back to his original home, because it's very gray. Even oh, though that long journey, yeah, yeah. Even though he's on the gray side, that's still where his memories are of being happy during mm-hmm. that time. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it has a lot to say about uh, what the Germans were going through at, during that time. Um, but I didn't catch on that. Uh, what's her name? Tilda Swindle. Tilda Swinton, that she I, was. The, I didn't know she was the old man. I wanted to tell you so bad during the movie, but it's such a quiet film. I just didn't want to be like, "That's Tilda Swinton." I, I knew something <laughs> was like off about the old man. Yeah, because I was like, "That's not a and real old man." And I forgot to man. tell you after too. <laughs> I gotta watch this. I don't. Yeah, I was like, "That's not a real old man." Like I knew it was like uh, makeup, but I didn't. I couldn't tell that was. So the basic Tilda. plot of Suspiria is a girl from America gets accepted in a to a to a dance academy um overseas and she joins this dance academy and the girls that are attending 
are slowly going missing one by one and there's a conspiracy oh, that the dance school is being run by witches ah, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and so if there's the witches <laughs> may or may not be like picking the girls off one by one. Oh, that's For, tea honey mm-hmm. oh my god that sounds it's good. really cool honestly the 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 remake is is if, if you're like a first time watcher you're gonna love it you mm-hmm. know what i mean because it, yeah. it really is a cool movie Especially if you're liking movies like Saltburn, Hereditary, mm-hmm. like Midsummer, shit like that. Like it definitely falls in line with like the the art house film shit. You gotcha. know what I mean? Yeah. Um. I just be I I just have such a I have such a love for Argento and Giallo and Suspiria and that trilogy and it just Suspiria was the gateway drug of fucking going all in on horn horror Mm -hmm. like i went from being like michael myers is cool to being like oh fuck you know what i mean so like it just opened my eyes to so much i'm not that into like horror like i love a good thriller i love a good like psychological thriller like Mm -hmm. anything in that realm but Mm -hmm. for some reason like i am not the the horror you know spooky girl no i have pink hair (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not a spooky girl like i dress bright kind of vibe like it's very well known that i i don't really mess with that shit but i like i'm a anxiety ridden baby <laughs> so um like pop-ups and stuff like that like they jump scares and stuff. they freak me out more than like thinking about something would like they make me more paranoid than like like watching a like a home invasion movie okay so that's terrifying like home invasion movies yeah that is like i can't like things like the strangers i love it i love them but they'll they'll freak me out but i i would totally recommend you to watch suspiria okay it's a good hybrid of like horror but it is definitely a thriller and it's it is such a slow burn Mm -hmm. gotcha um but yeah, it's got Dakota Johnson, Mia Goth, oh, Tilda I love Swinton, Mia Goth, um, Chloe Grace Moretz. I think yeah, that's Chloe why Grace. I didn't like it because I'm just like I just I don't know. Are you just partial about, to her? I don't know. There's just something. I like, was her partial. and like Joey King for some reason. They just like oh, gave me the same, ick. oh my god, Joey King know. gives me the ick like, too. I can just, the ad gave me the ick, honey. Uh-uh. I will say though, um, what was that one? Um, fuck, what is it called? It was she was like a vampire or something let me in or something oh yeah oh yeah. is that is that, that one, one is actually the right pretty one good in. Huh? let the right one in is that what you're talking about the no American? it's let me it's, in it's oh, let, let me in, okay. in. Chloe, yeah where she's like a a vampire or something where she has to, so yeah. it's a remake it, it's, it's a, a remake, remake of the right? foreign that, film yeah. Yeah. yeah is that a new one no it's just like probably made in like 2014 oh yeah. okay. mm-hmm. gotcha. but i want to say the original one uh because the one chloe grace is uh, is a remake of a european film i believe um, I want to say that one's from like the 2000s. I don't think it's from the 90s. But yeah, they came maybe like 10 years apart. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just seems like I wish they would have if they would have maybe picked different like cast members for like Mia Goth, I think did perfectly in it. I don't know. I think I just I Mia see Goth is perfect she, she is yeah she's I, perfect she's great. you know what and i really like dakota johnson's performance yes, but i can't um, get over her from 50 shades of gray that's all i'm ever so gonna I think, see her as I, that's that's i think that's why i was like yeah the fuck is she? Like, I, and like the wig also mm-hmm. not even me being a hairdresser <laughs> but that wig was wrong the wigs are so clockable <laughs> Okay, no, that, that wig sucks, was wrong, though. honey. When, when it it take like me that? out. <laughs> like, if I can clock the wig, I'm like, yeah. You're gonna do that with that explosion, but you can't. Yeah. You can't blend in the hairline. You can't pluck that hairline a little like bit. Like girl. So yeah. Anyways, uh, I agree. Besides the wig work, and besides, like she, she, she was fresh. She was hot off of the Fifty Shades trilogy yeah. when Suspiria came out. So I feel like that disconnect hadn't happened yet, but this fourth time around, she had this innocence to her, mm-hmm. like, and you could really fully see it in the performance. Like she has like this almost like childlike innocence, or like this very like, like she's like this like little doll that's just very like, I don't know, like, I. I liked her character this fourth time around. Yeah. It sucks because it's, it's the same fucking movie I've been trying to watch since 2018. But six There's years later, it Dancing happened. killed me in that. Like, I also didn't like the, the dancing, dancing either. It was just like... But this, but this fourth time around, <laughs> it, it had so, like, flow to it. It had flow to it and it had intention to it. And like when I finally saw it pan out, I was like, oh, fuck 
fucking god but it's like i said the fourth time around i was able to catch on to so many things that once mm-hmm. i saw this dance shit happen i was like oh my god it was so plain as day this whole fucking movie mm-hmm. no yeah. yeah how did the dance go <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and do it. It just seems so like, it was just goofy to me. It was like. (laughs) I was thinking too. I was like, that kind of dancing. I was like. It's like fucking like, what is uh, like the, the fucking the step crew whatever uh oh the stomp no uh, stomp stomp is it stomp oh um it's like crump like crumping yeah (laughs) they were crumping that bitch they was crumping in that bitch but it was like a satanic like satanic crumping in slow motion (laughs) but they were like wearing like this it's like bikinis but it's like string ropes it was like some and like so it's like flying all over the place. They had like halfway ass like BDSM like ropes, yeah. but also it was like the fifties, the sixties, sixties, right? What the movie? Uh-huh. It's seven, uh, 70s. 70s? Work, yeah, seventies. Seventies. Work, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking too. I was like, it's like, just, it's like, like, could you conjure up something by doing I like those know. weird dances like that? I'm I mean, conjuring you know up some shit when I be dancing <laughs> like that. Sometimes. There's like, well, there's a thing like if you there's certain dances that you can do and they may look goofy as hell, but like they like get certain energies out of you. No, you know what? I have I have a memory. <laughs> yeah, you were you were there. You were there. It was the night of our hereditary screening. Uh-huh. It was me, you, Sinya, Riley, and Izzy mm-hmm. at Whataburger. And it was like fucking three in the morning or something. But we were having to sit in the restaurant because it was storming oh, so shit. bad. I do you remember this? Yeah, I do. And, but I swear it got heavier because one of these kids, he was working at Whataburger, but he went outside. It was just raining. He went outside and I saw him do a fucking rain dance. Do the jig? I saw oh him do God. a rain dance no. outside. I forgot about I that. I was profiling, but he looked a little native. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Like, and it stormed. And then it stormed. stormed. And like, we, we were having you just sit in the restaurant and just, because it was just, you couldn't even walk to your fucking car. Also, Damn. all of us were just kind of just. Because it was me, you. <laughs> Sinya. Riley was there. Izzy was Izzy there. Izzy was there too. Yeah. I remember, like, I felt, I was just like, God damn. And because lighting, I, lighting I, was we hitting literally pretty had close a, too. me and Roy drove to Vegas the next day. Like, as oh, in, like, shit. three hours later. And damn. so, yeah, yeah, I was just like, I need to go home. Oh my God, I need to go home. I need to go finish my laundry. <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. I swear, he did a rain dance. He did a little. No, I swear. I a no, I, that's exactly what he was doing. He had his water burger tray because he would drop off an order. He'll go outside and dance. I I saw that, and he was like on some like bouncing in the rain with his like arms, and he was like his feet were kicking, and I caught it. Well, we need to do more of that because we need the. the we rain. Need, yeah, yeah, we need the. I rain. also I also used to be friends with somebody that said that when she was a little girl, um, her grandma taught her how to call the rain. And she did it as a little girl, and her mom got mad and told her to never do that shit again. Have you heard about cutting the clouds? Have, have you ever heard? Of yes, uh huh. I remember she told me that as well. Yeah, uh, cutting the clouds. That might be some Mexican shit, but yeah, like if a, uh, like I remember seeing my dad do it when we had that I've tornado. Never heard that. When we had the tornado that almost hit <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, back in 2020, I remember seeing my dad like mm-hmm. you get a knife and you like. I've the seen clouds that. And oh, shit. No, and the tornado I, that's also, uh, I think <laughs> I also do that on a uh, reservoir uh, re- reservation. Is it, Roy, what's that? What's that one show called that we like? Reservation Dogs. Yes. Reser- yeah, they also do that. One yeah. of the characters they do that because there's a tornado coming and he's got to cut the clouds. So they're trying to convince him to cut the clouds. Yeah, because we're like Yaki Indians, so there's some. Yeah. I don't know. I like think he I've seriously seen... got out like a big knife, and like where that tornado was starting to spin, he like did this some shit. Then so I owe your dad. So my dad saved our lives. Yeah. Period. Yeah. 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 I was all like embarrassed. I was gonna get killed by a tornado. I was like, this is gonna be <laughs> oh, so yeah, embarrassing. Oh yeah, it was like right above you too, huh? Yeah, like yeah. that would be so embarrassing. Like it was right after COVID. Like, we didn't even know you. I didn't even know you at that time. I was too. like. Hottest I had ever been. I had like just lost a lot of weight, and I was like, and a strongest to win is just gonna knock me out, like Damn. just in my shit. Like that's embarrassing. I know dying like that would suck. Yeah, mm. I kind of want to die naked Man, in I've the shower. A, I've, I've been on a <laughs> tornado. I've been on a tornado rabbit hole lately. Um, yeah, with a rose in hand <laughs> in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> But Twisters is coming Have you out. guys seen those memes of like, it's like, I hope I don't die in the shower. And it's like a hairless cat that's like on its back and it's like this. 
Belly up, <laughs> honey. <laughs> belly up. Oh, no. Y'all, that reminds me of, like, <laughs> I've, pa- <laughs> I've passed out in the shower once before. No, oh, I, I had to, girl. I did that, too. I, I was literally talking about that. Like, okay, so, like, a few years ago, I got lipo, and I came back home or whatever, and my fr- I had a friend that she was gonna stay with me and i was like trying to be modest and i was like i can shower myself i don't need help <laughs> she's like okay i'm just i'm gonna be right here i'll be outside and i was like okay i try to shower the steam hits me and i just oh yes and next thing i know she's oh trying to open the door and my body's like locking <laughs> the door <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. and even then when i woke up i was like hold on i'm naked <laughs> i was still trying to like be modest about I it i love that <laughs> That's how that's, I almost died, dude. I dude. put in the shower, clipped my head on the doorknob, and I was That's just, the way I would have died. I think it'd just be so funny to die like that. Die naked. I, I no, have to go out. It was so funny. I was crying because yeah. I was like, you saw me naked. Oh, my God. Like, I was just so like, uh, <laughs> you said, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I know. Shower curtains all on me. <laughs> she said, let me cover up real quick. <laughs> but it rips the curtain down. <laughs> It's like I told you about taking Her last them, moment. I told you about taking them long showers. Bro. Not for real. And like I take like the hottest shower, yes. so I just know my ass just got in there thinking Same. steam was normal and Oh, got sometimes me. I be seeing black dots. I'm anemic. Same. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like No, hot showers are the best and worst. Like okay, literally. have you seen that TikTok before we end this? Have you seen that TikTok? It's like when you're taking like your everything shower or whatever and you have to like sit down because you're like you're gonna die in the shower yes. <laughs> literally i took my everything shower not too long last night I took it last <laughs> night and my water pressure in my bathroom fucking sucks but my brother's bathroom he is the master bedroom so uh my dad just redid uh the uh, the bathroom in there so mm-hmm. it has a nice ass shower with some nice ass water pressure and he has a, <laughs> a little stool in uh-huh. there and so i just i let the hot water run on me and i was like i'm gonna shave my legs in five minutes and i sat down and i just uh-huh. <laughs> and i was like damn that stool is nice to shave your legs to sit down <laughs> like you can just like sit it's there and wash out just story. wash your hair you know like wash your hair like that do a little dip like that shit's <laughs> nice i'll sit down in the shower shit but it's helpful for for the the anemic stuff so. <laughs> it's anemic friendly yeah y'all, y'all do beer showers yeah yeah mm. no i've done oh. i've done uh no, I've cookie done a showers meal. you drink the the drain water <laughs> no, I love, hey, sh- no. I love shower beers, especially after like a long ass day of work. I should try this. it. But yeah, you there is one more thing I want to say about salt burn in the bathtub scene. The only reason why I think all of us think that is so like disgusting is because it it's couldn't like, be just because it's like cum water. Well, yeah, That's- duh. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's it's basically a ritual to like like take in that family like swallow that family whole you know it's like a he it's a symbolism yeah it's yeah, and sense. basically yeah. like and, and he when ended he him because out, well felix was like he was the it guy in the family yeah so he would have been the guy to actually pass on the name yep so yeah it was very he ritualistic it, yeah. to me it was like taking a blood sacrifice kind of like also it's me. like how many real rich people out there like did that <laughs> no i'd also have to yeah. say like this is this is kind of like off topic but do any of y'all know like, i mean i'm sure y'all know marina Umbra- umbramovic whatever the serbian like performance artist no I spirit don't cooking about. nothing oh yeah. i've heard of spirit cooking yeah, yeah and it's like her recipe for like i can go into this this is like one of my biggest like conspiracy things that i get into because it's so fucking weird but like she created this like performance art of like it's called spirit cooking and like the recipe is like breast milk blood like semen and like all this stuff but she's also tied into like some of like the elitists oh that like basically like sacrifice yeah apparently debbie harry uh, from blondie does this yeah (laughs) yeah that's a whole nother bag of worms that we'll have to open up but yeah she's fucking weird and like you can throw some shit in some shit and drink it or whatever and it's like you know what? I've never really liked performance art. 
<laughs> other than a dra- other than going to a drag shows, that's yeah. the only performance yeah. right, I'm that's- I'm gonna fuck with, you know, because that's fucking that's even crazy for me, and I'm into some crazy ass shit. Like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Like, so fuck off with all that yeah. shit like hell no but yeah i didn't even think it's of really that like sacrificial about, like yeah uh, ritualistic type weird shit oh yeah it's and weird. like that's the whole like that's the whole thing and like they get fuck they lose their minds like venetia said and you know uh midsummer night's dream that play mm-hmm. by shakespeare is yes. actually fucking nuts like and it's just it makes no sense and they all lose their minds party. Literally, Midsummer Night's Dream. Literally, and then so, like the an- the antlers he was wearing too. I want to know how that like plays in like the, the symbolism. Oh, oh, there was a lot of like it's like the party. Yeah, it was like a Rothschild style yes. party. Yes. Yeah, yes. well, and it's it's very um, y'all know the story of the Minotaur in Greek. Mm-mm. Um, Mm-mm. um, so basically, I forget all their names because I don't be yeah. Those are some weird ass names. I'm not gonna remember them. Anyways, basically, I know that there was this king, and um, Poseidon like had asked him something to do something for him. He ended up not doing it, um, so he turned um, the the king into a bull, and forced his wife to have sex with the bull to fall in love with the bull again. Then they had the Minotaur, and so this Minotaur got, gets placed in the labyrinth. Mm. in the labyrinth oh. <laughs> literally and um uh anyways this guy um like savior guy comes and kills makes his way through the labyrinth kills the minotaur but he he ends up being the bad guy because he goes home and he's like um uh just he forgets about the girl that he's in love with like he's he's in the in this like power hungry riches all to me goes home and he's just a fucking bad guy now so the minotaur represents that story of him coming when when he's when he slays uh felix he's slaying the minotaur the monster but barry's character is also the minotaur because he's the monster and all the symbolism around him like in the bar there's the minotaur is that what that demonic statue yeah. was? Okay. Mm-hmm. it's I the minotaur you're like d- oh my gosh that's so much better than like <laughs> horny <laughs> no, good. no because that was it for me like the amount of times where i had to like cover myself in the blanket, scooch down a little bit, watching into this movie, because I was like, ah, literally no, shaking in my is, boots. I <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I just, I love that movie so it much. It is, it's so it's, good. It's, it's so love the good. ending scene? The, the ending scene? Oh. <laughs> oh, the ending scene? Mayhaps. Okay, <laughs> love the ending scene because of, yes, that, and he was not wearing a prosthetic, honey. <laughs> Anyways, love that part of it. But that was also like the puppet master. <laughs> the puppet master the just just doing whatever the fuck he wants because he owns Saltburn now. You yeah, know, like his... eat the fucking rich, bitch. There's a reason why he's going to be the next Joker. That's cool. Oh, I know, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know. And what's crazy, too, is like his family really wasn't even that bad. Like he was no. fucking lying about that. He had a really yeah. really decent family. He actually. really did. Yeah. He, yeah. He was like, out here lying. talking about how his dad, dad died, died and yes. his mom's oh, like yeah. an alcoholic or something. And then literally Felix takes him bro, back to his house. That scene gave he's got me a normal ass family. Anxiety. Like that's why I don't lie anymore. Like I used to be a like a really, really Solver good liar. Made you stop lying? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, the that scene of where they drive up and he's like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. That gave me so much anxiety because, like, I remember, like, getting lying and getting lie. caught the getting fuck up. That's why I don't lie anymore. Because I was getting yeah. caught up towards the end of my lying days and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be dead honest and if people get hurt, people get hurt. I don't really give a fuck. Yeah. So, but he's that like, I, I've talked about my sisters before. <laughs> that literally, and he's, and he's, throughout and he was, he's saying I'm an only child. Yeah. yeah, and he was lying to his parents too. I don't know if y'all caught that, mm-hmm. but like, that was like, bitch, who are you? Like, you could have just been cool. You could have just been chill. Literally, master manipulator. Master manipulator. Master uh, debater. <laughs> master 
Eater. <laughs> no, that's Felix. This was a fun one. Yeah, it was. I, I like the idea of having multiple guests on and just having a clusterfuck of a podcast that actually just Hell worked yeah. out. I thought this I liked it. I liked the all the personalities we had. I think this is a funny one. Hell yeah. Um it was fun. I want to thank y'all for coming on. Yes. Thank you. thank you for having us. Yes, dude. Y'all I'm are more so than welcome to come back on in the future if y'all ever want to chop it up about anything else. Oh my god, for real. Y'all have anything y'all want to promote? Anything at all? Um World Peace. Yes. Oh, and <laughs> and um <laughs> Free Palestine. Yes, also, exactly. Free Palestine. Follow me on Instagram. It's it's under at big pink underscore pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I am not kidding. That's, she'll be you know, tagged in this and yes. Oh, I, I that. never thought I of that. that. You never I never did. thought I'd just <laughs> big pink pee pee. And I just recently changed it. I just you recently did. changed I my snap. Because yeah. remember it used to be under it used to be it's under pee -pee. like PB yeah. and the underscore Hodgkins, my last name, but it's not that anymore. I thought I needed a new brand. There you so. go. Yeah, I just barely thought. <laughs> I just thought it was big pink. And then big, pink. big pink. <laughs> 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 That's so innocent. It's all like <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You got anything you wanna add, Bradley? Uh follow me at Bradley Noel Garcia, Lords of Film. We got a lot of cool things coming up. Uh next month. This should be this next month should be very fun. Uh and I can't wait till summer. That's about oh, it. Oh yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> So you can follow me at Hellasoft on Instagram. Uh, you can follow us at Lords of Film with the Z on Instagram. Follow the Snake Pit. Follow the Follow the Eight Hundred Six Collective. Um, you can listen to us on Spotify, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Um, by the time this comes out, we'll probably have already started teasing it or announcing it. But we need your support at the next Lords of Film screening. Yes. April 24th, we're going to be screening Lords of Chaos. Um, we've got a lot of really cool things that um, we're going to be incorporated with this, that we're going to be incorporating with the screening. Um, whenever I started wanting it, whenever we started doing the movie nights, I just wanted them to be like curated events and I wanted it to be just something that was fully centered around a comfortable movie viewing experience and meeting chase he definitely was like the um perfect layer to that as in like having a movie buff come in with two other movie buffs and telling us how to position our couches and how to get the best sound oh and i love that. how to um place his projector with intention of like okay this is going to be the best way that we're going to get this you know what i mean and um just so we've continually sharpened our movie viewing experience and the next step to this is making more curated, immersive movie viewing experiences and, and that's what Lords of Film is all about. And so mm. I really need y'all support next month. Yes. Um, tickets will be 15 bucks. We're gonna be catered by Taste Buds. We're gonna Ooh. have uh, multiple options for our non-meat eaters. Uh, we're considering you guys as well. So please, 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 um, as these announcements start rolling out, as we start asking um, for your shirt donations that will be announced later on as well, um, please, if there's any way that you can help us, let us know. But yeah, thank you so much. And it's always a pleasure getting to do this shit. And thanks for listening to episode 34. We'll see you next yes. time. Woo, woo. Bye. Bye-bye.